Welcome to Pell City First United Methodist Church and this expression of online worship. My name is Joe Riddle. I'm one of the associate pastors here at the church, uh, and we are so glad that you've chosen to join us for worship today. We are continuing our deep dive into the Lord's Prayer as we break it down word by word, line by line, and try to understand what Jesus taught us to pray. As we begin this time uh, of worship, I want to invite you uh, to light a candle along with me just as a way of setting aside this time as we go or as we come before God. In college, I signed up for a computer class with several of my friends, and I can't remember now if it was a required class or just one that we were pretty sure was going to be you know, an easy A. Uh, but we all showed up that first week of class, and we were just bored out of our minds. Uh, the class that week was for people, I think, who had never turned on a computer before. Uh, and so it was uh, just so elementary. By the second week of classes, uh, my friends told me they were going to hang out at the pool uh, instead of coming to class. I was trying to be good, so I went to class. And that week, we were learning the basics of Word, which, again, I had been using since middle school. And again, I was just bored out of my mind. Halfway through the class, I started getting texts from my friends with pictures of them at the pool asking me where I was. I told them I was in class. So the next week, uh, before class started, I got a text from one of my friends that said, hey, we're going to the pool. Why don't you come with us this time? And they explained, you know, you, you don't have to be there. The attendance isn't taken. All you got to do is show up at the end of the semester, take a final, and you'll be set. I was tempted to go, and so tempted that I did go. I went to the pool and hung out with my friends instead of going to class. Uh, pretty soon, uh, we did this for a couple weeks, and pretty soon I, I didn't need any text, I didn't need any help uh, skipping that class. It was just a habit uh, for me. And I went back at the end of the semester to take this final exam and found out that they had progressed beyond Word and learned a whole lot about Excel and Publisher and all of these other programs that at that point I had never worked with. And so that ended up being my lowest grade uh, in all of college. And to this day, I am still amazed at what Ashley can do and others like Tracy uh, with Publisher and, and Excel. Um, I definitely missed out on some of that learning. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We all know what it's like to be tempted. It's that lure or, or the wooing that we feel inside of us. It's as if there are two parts of us. The, the one are both trying to decide what is best for us, but, but sometimes it's a lure to say, think, or act in ways that we know are morally wrong or that are not healthy for ourselves or for others. Sometimes it's a temptation to not do anything when God is calling you to do something. Oftentimes we know that some part of it is wrong or it's going to leave us not feeling great it may leave us missing out on education. 
But there's that other part of us that rationalizes it's okay. Or, or it convinces us that we're just not strong enough to continually resist that temptation over and over. So you might as well just go ahead and give in now. There are many temptations. Sometimes we're tempted to overconsume, to gossip, to laugh at a racist joke. We're tempted to not care. We're tempted by a desire for more or a, a desire for affirmation. We're tempted to want what is not ours, tempted to blow up at someone else or to assume the worst about someone, tempted to live and think as if the world revolves around us and never worrying about loving God or loving others. Think of the seven deadly sins, lust, gluttony, greed, indifference, anger, envy, and pride. They all seem to start with this, the slightest temptation. All that we pray in the Lord's Prayer even can be heard as a temptation. Right? Thy kingdom come. It's tempting to make it about my kingdom. Thy will be done. Of course, I want to do it my way. Give us this day our daily bread. It's tempting to take more than enough for ourselves. And forgive us our trespasses for when we've already given in to all these other temptations. And so it's no wonder Jesus taught us to pray, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. But of all the petitions, of all the different things we pray for in the Lord's Prayer, this one still has to be one of the hardest to understand. At least it always has been for me. And actually, in some denominations, they've recently changed the wording around just a little uh, to try and make it a little clearer what the prayer is for. The question at the heart of that change was, why would God lead us into temptation? Right? Why would we need to pray to God not to lead us into temp temptation? Does God tempt us or want us to be tempted, maybe to strengthen our faith or, or to prove a point somehow? And again, if that is the case, then why would we pray for God not to lead us into temptation? I mean, if uh, why, why would we not instead pray, give us all the temptation? You know, if it's like a, a workout for our faith, then let's get jacked, right? Let's, let's let our faith become stronger through these temptations. When we look at Scripture, it's still a little confusing. Uh, we have stories like Job's where it appears God is working with the Satan, the accuser, to tempt Job into sinning. Or we have the story of Abraham uh, being, being asked, being told to sacrifice his son Isaac, tempting him to not listen to God. Or even with Jesus, the whole, we're told the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted. These seem to be instances of God tempting someone to test their faith or somehow prove a point. But then we also have verses like James uh, chapter 1 verses 12 through 15. And that says this. Blessed is anyone who endures temptation. Such a one has stood the test and will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. No one, when tempted, should say, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, 
and he himself tempts no one. But one is tempted by one's own desire, being lured and enticed by it. Then, when that desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and that sin, when it is fully grown, gives birth to death. Do not be deceived, my beloved. And that's the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, we, we don't have the time to fully dive into that confusion. Um, it's not black and white, but for the sake of our time and for the sermon, I'll say I tend to agree with James. Uh, I don't believe that God tempts anyone. I believe David also had it right in Psalm 23. He said, He leads me in right paths for His name's sake. And so then, what do we make of this prayer that Jesus taught us? I like the proposal of several pastors I read this week who said we don't necessarily need to change the wording of, or change the, the prayer around, but we may just be missing a comma. If we add a comma after lead us, it becomes lead us, pause. It's lead us. Not into temptation as the tempter or maybe ourselves might lead, but deliver us from evil. The focus becomes God leading us. And I think we all know what happens when we try to lead. I mean, it's easy to, to fall off the wagon or to, to give in to that temptation. Now, I think it's also important to remember that, again, this prayer is not primarily for me, my, and mine. We, we never say that. And most of what we have talked about and imagined up until now as temptation is the very personal side of it. But this is a prayer to lead us not into temptation. We can look throughout history and see where nations and, and large groups of people committed terrible acts against others. Living when we do, it's easy to recognize the atrocities of the Holocaust and to know that 94% of Germans in 1939 claimed to be Christian, and yet they gave in to the temptation of anti-Semitism. Right, the temptation to blame others and this belief that somehow they were better than others and then committed some of the most horrific crimes against humanity in the history of humanity. Or we remember the Rwandan genocide in 1994. 500,000 Tutsis were killed by their friends, their neighbors, even here in America, you know, we claim to be a Christian nation, and yet we also have the stains of, of these terrible uh, societal crimes. You know, we, we took this land from native groups that were already here. We left trails of tears. We partook in the slave trade. We, we built wealth through the work of enslaved people. The legacy of terror and lynching that followed that, the legacy of Jim Crow laws and separate but equal. There's a long history of racism in our country, a long time of giving in to the temptation to blame others or, or believe lies so that we could maintain the status quo and, and build wealth. Jesus teaches us to pray for ourselves personally, but also for our society, our nation, and our world. And so we pray, God, lead us, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I'm reminded that as we pray this Lord's Prayer, it changes us. 
Uh, we pray and we work for that which we pray. So we invite God to lead us, but we also have a part to play in following after God. Right? We can listen to the tempter or we can listen to the voice of the good shepherd. Now, it takes some time to learn the difference between the two. The, the tempter knows what the shepherd sounds like, too. And so it takes really knowing and understanding Scripture. It, it takes time alone with God. Sometimes we need other people in our community to help us differentiate between the two voices. And sometimes we fail. It's part of being human. And so, for those times when we fail, we pray, deliver us from evil. We're inviting God, our shepherd, to lead us and to protect us from harm. Uh, I came across this video I want to show you. And what you don't see before is the alligator suddenly lunging out of the water and seizing this little puppy. But watch this. This is the good news. Evil always lurks near us, ready to pounce and drag us under. Uh, sometimes we, we contribute. We can be a little bit foolish and, and wander a little too closely. But like this man with his wet cigar, God is always by our side. We can be confident in go, knowing that God will never leave us or forsake us. No matter what temptations we've given into or what situations we find ourselves in, God is right there. God is right here, waiting, watching, ready to jump in and pry you free from the grips of the evil one. Jesus knew the internal struggle with temptation. He understood that feeling of being lured, of our minds rationalizing something we know deep down isn't right or convincing us it's better if we don't upset things too much and do nothing when we should have done something. Jesus knew his followers would struggle personally with temptation and that whole societies, whole nations would fall into those same traps leading to great evils. And so we need this prayer. God's people need this prayer, that we will not be deceived, but instead courageously follow after God's ways, after the way of Christ. So I invite you now, join me in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Take my heart and help me feel. Take my faith and make it real. Take my eyes and help me see All the love surrounding me Take my heart, take all 
all of me and take my loss and take my gain and take my trials and take my pain and take my life and let it be all that you would have for me don't let me go hold me close to where you are don't let me go and take heart take all of me don't let me go hold me close to where you are don't let me go take my heart take all And take my heart, take all of me.